Hi everybody, it's Zigarf 2024 again, and I'm with Matt Bennett from, well, the product is Move4D, and it's actually something that Matt was kind enough to loan us at Drexel for a period of time, and it was an amazing experience, but I'm gonna let you explain this. So what exactly is the Move4D system? Yeah, sure, thanks, uh, thanks for the interview. Uh, so I work for a company called Humanetics. Uh, we work together with IBV uh, in partnership to help with distribution in North America. So IBV is actually the developer and manufacturer of the Move4D system, which is a motion capture system. Um, and it utilizes uh, modules similar to the one I have here in front of me. Um, in the case of actually the configurations for the system, we need at least 12 of these modules. Um, we can expand that into 16, 20, 24, um, but essentially what that's doing is just increasing scan volume. So with the 12 module sy system, uh, it generates a scan volume of two meters by two meters by three meters. Uh, the, the height's a little bit variable depending on the size of the room you have, but three is kind of the benchmark for what we would like to um, set. So I'm used to motion capture modules that have a single lens on them, mm -hmm. but this module has four lenses across it. What's yes. going on there? Yeah, so uh, we have a, in the middle here, we have an infrared projector. Uh, and then on the exterior here, we have two infrared cameras uh, that are picking up the pattern uh, submitted by this, uh, or emitted by this um, projector. And then we also have a RGB camera here uh, for the texture. So. When you do motion capture with this, you're not getting just a skeletal movement system. You're actually getting the entire geometry of whatever subject you're capturing. Correct. And right. that's frame after frame. And mm -hmm. But you do get, the data isn't just a mesh and it's not just a skeleton, right? Correct, yeah. So uh, the infrared projection is picking up a point cloud. Uh, and then so we're actually, then later on, uh, the, all the point cloud data is processed here and then sent to a workstation. We can do post-processing to create a watertight mesh. Uh, so, but the actual um, process of this is actually uh, it's a frame rate of up to 178 frames per second. Uh, so, and when I say frames, it's not really like what you typically think about in terms of frames. Uh, it's actually objects uh, that we're creating. So, um, in a in a one second clip that's at 170 frame rate, uh, it's actually 178 OBJs after we do a watertight mesh. Um, and then that's stitched together, and each of those um, OBJs has its own texture, um, and, but we can also export that into uh, an FBX format. We can export it into a PLY format, which is just the raw point cloud data. Um, yeah, that's been something we've seen and heard a lot of people talking about for machine learning, uh, that they think that's going to expedite their workflows for that. Um, so that's sort of the application that we're seeing here, but we also see it uh, for, its initial intended use was biomechanical research. Uh, so BDH format uh, is, is the file type for export uh, that we typically see in that. Um, but we've also worked in, uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to, to you earlier, we were, um, uh, it's relatively new technology and we're sort of branching out into new markets all the time, which is great. And that's, that's why we're here, it's our second year here. Uh, and that's why we were happy to lend you this, this equipment uh, to get some more research on our side to figure out how we can better fit into this market as well. But apparel, biomechanics, sports, now production, gaming. Yeah, I have to confess that, um, so when I scanned myself with this, you know, I was um, really disappointed to discover it could export a spreadsheet of every single measurement of every diameter uh, <laughs> that defined my, and so yeah, that was a little terrifying. But it, it's really fascinating the amount of versatility you have, like once you've done a capture, mm -hmm. you can you can export a spreadsheet of measurements, but you can also export a skeletal mesh that is moving with, you know, so you could use that in a traditional biometric system mm -hmm. or animation, like we were using it. Um, but then you also get the, the actual geometry of the outer mesh, and like in your FBX, I was, I was really impressed to see that we have a skeletal mesh moving, but then for every single frame, there was a blend shape mm. to basically dial in all of the fabric motion. And so I could absolutely see that being tremendously useful in, in sports training, in terms of the uh, performance of an athlete or in fashion, being able to actually analyze quantitatively movement of exterior fabric in relation to the like skeletal movement underneath. Absolutely, that's one of the things I, I, that's really the, the key selling point with this is that uh, it's a markerless system, so you don't have to wear the, the funky suit with the dots all over it, you know, so you can really wear whatever you want. Uh, and we actually have a, one of our interns from uh, NC State uh, University 
actually did uh, part of her research for her PhD um, was uh, testing uh, fabrics. So she actually used this to test uh, like different strengths and stretches of, of fabric. So yeah, it's it's got lots of different applications, and I mean it's typically supposed to be used for for scanning bodies, but we're seeing more and more use cases daily. So it's it's really interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time, Matt. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, have fun.